Exploring the latest Pokémon regions, catching the wild Pokémon and training them to grow strong, challenging the gyms to eventually reach the Pokémon League and become champion. Stop right there! Oh uh, wait, I need how many badges? Eight? Yeah, and I've got to uh, five, six, seven... Did I skip the gym in Saffron City again? Oh, this is like my 14th playthrough. Gym badges. Now you might think like, whoa, hang on. How's this guy gonna talk about gym badges for that much time? What is there even to explain? Like it's the boulder badge from the rock type gym. Shaped like a gemstone colored like a rock because gems are rocks. Like what more is there? And that pretty much sums up the boulder badge. I mean, you could also mention that it's in Pewter City and Pewter itself is a very silvery gray color too, but that's just one badge. And it's a simple one. But now, why is the Soul Badge the Poison type one? And then the Marsh Badge is Psychic? And it looks like this? And why does the Grass type Garden Loving Gym Leader Erica give you the Rainbow Badge instead of like, a leaf? And then Giovanni gives you a leaf! I have questions! And I have answers. So let's go through the entire Pokemon world region by region and explain the meaning and design of every gym badge. And how in the middle gens, they tie in perfectly with the gym leaders, city locations, and regional themes they are in. Then show how much later on, the most recent gens of gym badges, well, they've all lost their soul. 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 So Echoes don't get louder, Maxel. What are you doing? After you beat Brock, the rock with a B, you head to the water-type gym in Cerulean City, led by Misty to get the Cascade Badge. It's a water-colored water droplet. Go figure. But like the city, it's Cerulean. The color, which is really just fancy talk or fancy blue. Now, it's called the Cascade Badge because that word describes waterfalls. The water cascades down the cliffside. To cascade means to pour downward rapidly and in large quantities. So yeah, waterfalls, which themselves happen to be very misty. Next is the Thunder Badge, clearly the electric-type gym ran by Lieutenant Surge, but this badge design doesn't really scream thunder or lightning, now does it? Sure, it's yellow and orange. Vermilion, even. That's also the name of the city it's in. It's Pikachu and Raichu colors, which is fitting, but what's with this design? It's like a flower, but why? Lieutenant Surge doesn't exactly strike me as the romantic type. His attraction value is currently through the roof. Like, oh my god. Beefy man in uniform, he doesn't need to be romantic gotten sidetracked again. Well, there are plants and flowers that symbolize thunder and lightning in things like the language of flowers and feng shui, but none of them really look the part for the badge. So, maybe the badge is like a gold star. Gold is commonly used in finer electronics like computer chips, and being a gold star would be fitting of his military theming after all. Golden stars are used symbolically in many militaries across the world for things like medals and rank insignia. Eight pointed ones too. But sticking to America, where Lieutenant Surge is from, the closest there is, is this eight-pointed, if you count the stem, leaf star looking thing. It's what lieutenant commanders in the Navy use, which is fitting enough, I suppose, but Serge specifically mentions being in the army, doesn't he? Which would mean he uses the silver leaf, unless he's actually a major. Uh, well, he also mentions flying airplanes a lot, and that's like Air Force stuff, so I feel like he wasn't designed with any specific role in mind, just sort of generic US military guy. It was Gen 1 after all, they weren't thinking that deep and specific about these kinds of things. Let's move on to Celadon City now and face Erica for the rainbow badge. But why is it a rainbow? For once, the color the city is named after doesn't fit it. Celadon is like a smooth light green. It works for this being a grass type gym, but not the badge. Well, at least the badge itself looks like a flower with rainbow colored petals, and flowers can be basically any color of the rainbow, so this is like a bunch of flowers in one. And also, plants absorb light and turn it into energy via photosynthesis, and light is what gives us the whole color spectrum. Plus, rainbows occur when there's lots of water particulates in the air, and most plants love when there's extra moisture in the air. And typically, when there's lots of plants in one area, they actually create more moisture in the air themselves. That's why rainforests are the way they are, and why cutting them all down is drying out the entire planet. Also note that rainbows are seen as girly, and as the creepy old man in front of the gym used to say, me! This gym is great! Only girls are allowed here! Uh, 
Uh, Officer Jenny, arrest this man! The soul badge for Koga's poison-type gym in Fuchsia City is another weird one. It's kinda like a heart shape, and a lot of poisons and venoms kill by messing with the organs, right? Paralyzing the heart is the deadliest thing a poison can do. Plus, consider that this gym is run by ninjas. Assassins who often poisoned their enemies sneakily, rather than attacking head-on. And in media, the best ninjas and sneaky dudes often do the whole control your heart rate and breathing thing to be as calm and silent as possible. Batman even does this once to stop poison from killing him. And I guess the heart and soul being so interchangeable in spirituality and aphorism makes it not too weird that it's called the soul badge. Some say that's where the soul is located, at your core. Heart. But I still think it would have made more sense to call it the Heart Badge. Although, this badge isn't shaped like a perfect heart by any means. Rather, it's a flower petal, specifically from the plant the city is named after, the Fuchsia. They are most often pink or purple, and purple is the color of the poison type too, so there you go. As a flower, Fuchsia symbolizes intuition and liveliness, specifically in a more spiritual sense. Passion, love, anger from your innermost being, your soul. Next up, we have the Marsh Badge in Saffron City, which is the psychic type gym badge? What do marshes have to do with psychic stuff? Well, hear me out for a bit. Nope, I nope. What? I looked at the script. You go on for two solid pages about bug bodies, only for me to pop in at the end and give you a one sentence answer, which is much more likely. Uh, so what is it? In English, the gym leader is named after Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Very popular character at the time of the first games. And where do witches normally live? Oh yeah, swamps, bogs, marshes. And there you go. I'm out. Well, I still want to summarize the bog body stuff. Basically, Bronze Age folks in Europe sacrificed kings to appease the gods by putting them in bogs to be mummified, as bogs and marshes were viewed as liminal or sacred places. Perhaps then the same kinds of places that one would meditate at. Psychic type stuff in Pokemon is fairly broad in what it pulls from, but it is heavily linked to real world practices that have to do with magic and or sacred stuff even if the people who practiced those practices didn't necessarily think of it as mind or psychic stuff. So, I guess there is that. But what's especially curious, though, is that in Japanese it's called the Gold Badge. Actually, most of the badges originally are just named a color. Gray, blue, orange, pink, green, gold. But gold does symbolically work here. Have you ever wondered why Psyduck, who's yellow, evolves into Golduck, who's blue, instead of gold? We have a whole video here that answers that question in significant more detail, but it has to do with what gold represents symbolically in things like alchemy and mysticism. Gold was seen by alchemists as the perfect union of mind and spirit, or the soul, as it were. It's a metaphor for people becoming divine and more in tune with the mystical and or metaphysical powers of the world. Gold represented the sun and all of the magics that it invokes on our plane. And even today, the crystal healing crowd will tell you that gold is very conductive and regenerative. It balances the auras and energy fields and attracts positive energy. It's identified with yin energy and amplifies self-confidence and will, and helps us recognize the positive qualities of others through our minds. Gold can also be used in combination with gemstones to help increase their own mystical energies too. And again, the psychic type has a lot to do with just general mysticism, but the badge being a circle within a circle is reminiscent of the alchemic symbol for gold and the sun. And then consider the city the gym is in, Saffron City. Like gold, one of the most expensive metals, the plant it's named after is the most expensive spice in the world, which, despite being a reddish color itself, makes a goldish yellow dye and makes whatever food you cook it in a warm goldish yellow color, which itself is very important in both Hinduism and Buddhism for many reasons tied to spirituality. And again, spirituality, in this case, usually equals psychic type in Pokemon. So what's next? Ah! This one shouldn't take long. The Volcano Badge. It's the Fire Type Badge. It looks like flames. It's named after the thing that is a big fiery mountain spitting out extremely hot lava, a volcano. And it's given to you by Blaine on Cinnabar Island. And wouldn't you know it, Cinnabar itself is red. Wow! And then they had to go and make things weird again for the last badge. Here we have the Earth Badge from the Ground Type Gym in Viridian City. And it looks like a weird flower 
leaf wand thing. The fact that the um, petals are shiny and gem-like makes sense, since gems come from the ground and have been associated with Kuthonic deities for eons. But then, like, you see the earth badge in the anime and other game depictions, and it's just straight up a leaf. It's like a fern or something. Hmm. Well, in a lot of media that involves, like, elemental powers, especially the four classics of water, fire, air, and earth, earth typically also includes plants. I mean, you plant them in the earth, they suck up dirt, you are what you eat and all. But no, there is something much cooler and more solid here that took me by complete surprise. This gym is run by Giovanni, the leader of Team Rocket, possibly as like a front or an alibi for him. But either way, while he's named Giovanni in the English version of the game to further solidify that he's like an Italian mob boss to the Western audience, his original name is Sakaki, a common name for Yakuza members in media, but also a kind of tree. The Cliera Japonica, or Sakaki. These trees are considered sacred to those of the Shinto faith, and so... Wands made out of Sakaki leaves and branches are one of your classic offerings at Shinto shrines. So I guess, in a way, the badge is more from Giovanni rather than from the ground-type gym itself, if that makes sense. But to link it to the ground a bit more, Sakaki trees are commonly planted, in the ground, around Shinto shrines too in order to become Shinboku, trees worshipped as a place where nature spirits and kami reside. And alongside them, you'll often find rock formations, steel, mounds, and Iwakura. These shrines are often built on top of large hills and mounds too, so right on top of a huge pile of earth. It's all a part of Shinto's nature and earth worship. It seems especially fitting then that several generations later, the protector of nature Pokemon would be a ground-type green hexagon thing too. And really, what better way to finish off your big adventure collecting all of the gyms through a large and beautiful natural region? I mean, compare Pokemon's Kanto to the real world Kanto, which is mostly urban city. It's the biggest metropolitan area in the world. Pokemon's Kanto is still mostly nature. This badge could then be symbolic of a sort of return to or respect for nature in a way. After all, these were the first Pokemon games, and Pokemon's creator Satoshi Tajiri was inspired by his love of bug catching as a kid, which has proven more and more difficult for modern kids to do because of just how expansive Tokyo and its neighboring cities have become throughout Kanto. So, Pokemon's Kanto is almost like a return to the time when Satoshi was a child, appreciating nature that much more. Or maybe I'm just looking into it too much, and it is just because Shinto Sakaki wand. Giovanni trying to atone for his sins in his own way, I suppose. You never know with these kinds of things, but do you prefer your badges straightforward like Paldea's, or a little bit more mysterious and symbolic like Kanto's? Perhaps a balance could be struck, like in the middle gens. But we should go in order for now, so let's travel right next door to Johto and see- Oh! What's hiding behind these pixels? Oh, it's a little life update. Let me show you. What food is such a big time sink on top of my usual Sun Lamp Gaming, Yoga Gaming, Real World Gaming reading time. I can't bake my casserole, smoke my meats, or simmer my curries for hours anymore. I just don't have the time. But two months ago, I started having Control's range of meal replacement and protein-packed products, and now I have healthier, quick meals that I don't have to think about. Just two scoops, not milk of choice. Shake, shake, shake! And it's done and filled with the proteins, vitamins, healthy fats, carbs, fiber, and a bunch of other elements to match or exceed those of a typical healthy meal. My my favorite flavor has to be the Fruity Flakes, which sounds like a paradox Pokemon. Control works with several dietary supplement industry professionals to create healthier products that are not only easy to consume, but tasty AF. What does that AF stand for, Loxton? Uh, no, it's actually Fleek. And they've got fancy shakers, protein cookies, and bars too. So hey, join me, save some time and money by ditching the fast food, and try out their bundle builder. Stack multiple products together to get up to 20% off, and use the code Loxton to get an additional 10% off. Link below. And a link to their website is too. Huh? Oh, I'm glad we can afford ceilings, but heading over to Johto now, you'll notice that Johto doesn't have a Pokemon League of its own, but it does have this path off the map which reveals all of Kanto! Weren't we just here? This blew my mind as a kid, but what blows my mind today is how I never questioned what some of the badges I've gotten are called. Like the Zephyr badge? Uh, I'm six. I don't know what a Zephyr is. Oh well. But now as an adult, my curiosity is piqued. 
So, let's explain all of Johto's- uh, Let's explain all of Johto's gym badges. And we start off strong with a pretty sensible design that makes sense for the gym's typing. It's the Zephyr badge from the flying type gym run by Falconer, the Falconer in Violet City. It turns out a Zephyr is a wind that blows from the west, or even just a gentle breeze in general. Johto is immediately west of Kanto, after all, but the word itself comes from Zephyrus, or Zephyrus, the winged Greek god of the western wind who brings the spring. So you could say the Zephyr badge is depicting Zephyrus's wings, which would be very fitting for a flying type badge. Though, due to the wings being so simplified, they also make me think of Lugia's weird feather finger things, and Lugia was one of the two box legendaries for this gen, and flying type, which itself is also represented by the color violet. It all comes together. But moving over to Azalea Town now, we face Bugsy and get the bug type Pive badge, which looks like a ladybug? Okay, uh, this was the gen that introduced Ladybug, and Bugsy doesn't even have what what the heck and to make matters worse ladybugs don't make hives nor does the badge in any way resemble a hive it's in what what is it this is gen 2 what what makes hives here bees i guess he does have a kakuna the original japanese name makes much more sense here it's simply called the insect badge it's simpler and more to the point yes but it's much better fitting i'd have taken bug badge even hive just doesn't really work but this is supposed to be an explainer video not an opinion piece Okay, but Hive is really dumb. But ladybugs themselves are one of those super helpful bugs that you probably want in your garden because they eat aphids, which want to consume and destroy your flowers, including azaleas, which do also come in a light green color, which is the color for the bug type. So, name aside, it still all comes together. And then the third gym badge is the plain badge. So plain badge might sound a bit insulting, but I guess it's fitting for the normal type, the type named and known for being boring and nondescript. But actually, it's really cool because because this badge's name is like a triple pun, or at the very least just uses multiple definitions of plain. Plain means normal and boring, every day, but also a plain is a relatively flat, broad, and open area in nature, like a savanna or prairie, and often looks very uniform, especially when they are a grassland, often being yellow or tan in color, like the flat, uniformly yellow rhombus that the badge is. And the plain badge is given out in the goldenrod gym, and goldenrod is a genus of flowering plants which are the same color yellow as the badge, and which grow in open areas like meadows and prairies, aka plains. Also, a plain in geometry, spelled different, is a flat, even space in two dimensions, and in images describing geometrical terms, the plain is almost always shown as a rhomboid, like the badge's shape. It's puns on top of puns, growing ever stronger as they continue to roll out. The gym leader here is the plainly white Whitney with her signature mill tank, which really is just the plainest everyday cow Pokemon ever. And where do cows like to spend most of their time? Yes, plains, munching and burping grass all day. Fertile plains tend to make the best farmland too, and if you look at satellite images of farmland, yeah, that's just a bunch of rhombuses. The fourth gym badge is the Fog Badge, which is given to you after completing the Ghost-type gym in Ecritique City. It looks like a ghostly, wispy apparition, and fog and mist are heavily tied to beliefs in ghosts and undead souls around the world, because it's so... spooky dooky. It's all very fitting of the Japanese traditional style city as well. Many yokai are said to have caused or be found in mist and fog. Thick fog is often evidence of ghostly activity nearby as well. So the very mortal gym leader, Morty, better be careful. Tangent! This is a rare instance of the color the city is named after not matching the gym badge and type. The teak in Ekritik comes from a type of tree, as most of Johto city names combine a color and a tree. But the color Ekru is a tannish beige skinny color, kind of like a grayish yellow even, which the badge is not, but it does fit thematically, as this color is traditionally the color of unbleached linen, which is what you would use to wrap up dead bodies. Notably, it's also the color of Sung Ming Dynasty mourning clothes. But enough about death, it's time we get the storm badge, which is the flying type- wait, no, uh, is the electric- no? It's the fighting type gym. 
Okay, I guess that makes sense. A lot of fighting styles use a storm of quick attacks all in quick succession. His fists came flying at me like a hurricane and stuff like that. Uh, and the badge itself does very much look like a cartoony fist in a fighting glove. Still though, I prefer the Japanese name, which translates to shock badge, which is still a bit confusing, but I don't know how they could make its fighting type any more clearer, sort of naming it like the punching bag badge. I mean the punching badge. Yeah. But it's given to you by Chuck in Sionwood City, which is another instance of the city name not fitting. So maybe it's not as rare as I was thinking before. It's Cyan Wood. Cyan Wood. Yeah? It's Cyan, like the water of the port. It's a port town. But the fighting type is not Cyan. But waves can be. This city does get hit by stormy waves. And think about the classic expert fighter training that involves sitting under a waterfall, which Chuck literally does. Practicing your fighting moves on the beach during a storm is another theatrical way to train your endurance. His blows are like the ocean waves, ceaselessly pounding the opponent. It's why one of the Urshifus is fighting water type, by the way. Plus, Chuck's main Pokémon is the water fighting type, Poliwrath. So, I guess it works out. Now, the Mineral Badge! Steel type! Notably, in Japanese, the badge is just called the Steel Badge directly, which is on the nose, but at least it's more straightforward. I hear Mineral Badge and I think rock, you know? Because rocks are minerals. But, you know, if you process and refine those minerals, you do get metal, so I guess it works. Just like the badge design, it's just sort of a non-painted stop sign, it's just a steel octagon with its eight glorious sides and eight stunning angles. And maybe it's even like the top of a steel bolt, maybe? Yeah? Oh man, but I'm starting to think that the city colors don't pertain to the badge at all anymore, aside from the first few. Jasmine of Olivine City gives this to you, and Olivine is an extremely green mineral. But interestingly, it is the primary component of the upper mantle and has become the most common material for making molding sand, which is what you pour liquid metal into to make it into a specific shape when it cools. Neat! And then we go to Mahogany Town, where you're given the Glacier Badge by Price. It's a snowflake, or a glacier from above, because it's ice type, from Price. Isn't that cool? So why Mahogany Town? Traditional mahogany trees live where it's hot, like rainforests. But there's also mountain mahogany, which, given the name, yes, likes to live up in the mountains where it's colder and snows more often. It's just not as well known. And the most epic and final badge to obtain in Johto is the Rising Badge. It's way cool. Dragon Head. Not a specific dragon Pokemon, though, just generic Dragon Head because it's the Dragon-type badge. It's given to you by Claire in a Dragon's Lair, Blackthorn City, which itself sounds rather draconic. I'm Blackthorn, and I'm confused about what I'm doing right now with my life. Blackthorn sounds draconic and scary, but really it's, it's just a plan. Blackthorns are very common wild berry bushes throughout Europe, where a lot of dragon mythology comes from. The fruit tends to be a very dark blackish purple, which is very fitting for the dragon type and this badge. Oh yeah, and it's called the Rising Badge because A, you're a rising star for getting it, it's the eighth badge, your next step is the Elite Four, and B, dragons rise really, really quickly into the sky, or even rise up waterfalls in this case. Waterfall is the HM you're allowed to use after getting this badge. And I'm sure you know the story that Magikarp is based on. A simple carp being turned into a dragon after successfully rising up a waterfall. Yeah. So all in all, it's good to see that while the badges are a bit more straightforward in this generation, there are still some fun connections to be made with uncommon words and meanings, as well as how they link up to the cities and gym leaders and types that they're associated with. And as you're about to see, this aspect of badge design got even stronger in Hoenn. Well, somewhat, anyway. There's uh, still a few weaker ones. Like the original red and blue, the first gym is the Rock-type gym, this time in Rustboro City, and led by Roxanne. She gives you the Stone Badge, which is simple in name, but not so simple in shape. What is this? Is it a brick? Bricks are stone, so is it like a brown brick on top of a split brick on top of a red brick? I guess so. Perhaps it's even like just 
plain old decorative bricks, like a decorative brick floor, or perhaps like the Rustboro City's own streets and sidewalks, all stone mosaic pathways. Plus, the badge is a rusty color, fitting of Rustboro City. So that explains that. So let's go on to the next badge. The Knuckle Badge in Duford Town, which is a port town, so the badge is blue, makes sense, I guess. It depicts a blue and orange boxing glove, which just so happens to be this gym leader's color scheme too. Watery blue and fighting type orange. The dude's a surfer, or at least talks like one. He's always talking about making waves, both metaphorically and literally. Fitting that his main Pokemon is Makuhita and Hawaiyama then, which itself is blue and orange. And a sumo wrestler. Beaches, of course, being common sumo wrestling spots. Next up is the Dynamo Badge, which you get after completing the Mobville City Gym, which is run by Watson. Now, even not knowing what a Dynamo is, can you tell that this is the electric type gym? I mean, what else is this yellow? And Watson? Watson? Yeah, so dynamos are basically the earliest electric generators. See the resemblance? No? Uh, well, here's a more recent one. They're a lot smaller now, and are just small parts of the electric generation. It's some round, coiled wire with a rod going through it. So, see it now? Yeah. Plus, it looks like a simplified version of his main Pokémon, Magnemite and Magneton. Though interestingly, in uh, Pokémon Emerald, they changed it to Manectric. But still, it's first ones. That's what matters here. Next is one of the coolest gym badges, in my opinion, from the hottest gym leader, too. We make our way to Lava Ridge Town to get the Heat Badge from Anime Guy Fieri Flannery. Really, though, the whole idea is just... Yeah, the badge is just a plume of fire coming off of a red-hot orb. Simple, but definitely one of the best-looking IMO. Now we backtrack to Petalburg City to get the balance badge from your dad. Norman, a plain, normal kind of guy like your dad. Our boy Norman walked so Larry could run. So it's normal type, and the badge could be seen in a couple different ways. First off, it's two evenly sized circles balancing one another, perhaps like two molecules or planets of equal mass orbiting each other. Or it's two round weights on a seesaw. Or it could just be straight up a barbell, which you could associate with the intense muscles and training that fighting type Pokemon and gym leaders train with, but that's not really balanced. That's taking fitness to an extreme. So be like his ace Pokemon, Slacking, who is so mightily powerful, mighty strong, and can easily lift any barbell when it's not slacking off every other turn. Balance. Plus, Norman is often portrayed as a kind and loving father who tries to find a good work-life balance, so there's that. There's also a balance to be made in gym badge design, because some are certainly deeper, while others are... Basic. So, uh, next we go off to Fortree City to face off against Winona for the feather badge. It's a feather because birds, flying type. But actually the design itself is fairly neat. You could see it as a single feather being blown back in the wind. Or you could see it as two upward wings on the back of a bird. And its overall shape is even sort of like the talons on birds of prey. And it's also the same color as her outfit, so there's that. Also, Fort Tree City, being the city it's in, is very fitting because all of the buildings here are tree houses joined together by rope bridges, like the Swiss Family Robinson kind of stuff. Or like birdhouses. So now we waltz on over to Moss Deep City to get the mind badge from the psychic type gym run by the twins Tate and Lisa. I love double battles. Moss Deep City, which has the Moss Deep Space Center, is based on the real world city of Tanagashima, which has the Tanagashima Space Center, the hub of JAXA, which is Japan's NASA. And in Pokemon, the psychic type is heavily associated with space, both scientifically and spiritually. The night sky and just space in general have a big connection to psychics and mystics and spiritualism the world over. Humans have been wondering what's in space and what space could possibly be since the dawn of humanity, and have thus attached a lot of spiritual meaning and power to it. So it's really like triply fitting that these gym leader twins use Sol Rock and Lunatone, 
psychic rocks that resemble celestial bodies. But anyways, the badge. It looks like a light pink heart that is yellow on the bottom with a fuchsia-y round gem in the middle. The two halves of the top of the heart are like separate pieces that come together, sort of like conjoined twins, but not in a physical sense, rather in a spiritual or mental sense. Think the classic twins that finish each other's sentences and do everything together trope, which Tate and Lisa do also. Basically always reading each other's minds psychically. Similarly, the brain controls the heart and the heart pumps blood to the brain. So the connection between a heart shape for the psychic badge and this whole motif makes a lot of sense, as does the reddish pink gem in the middle of it which is like the bindi that many women and sometimes men wear in Hindu, Jainism, and Buddhism, and is a red mark or small gem between the eyebrows that has relations to lots of spiritual things, such as helping control the latent energy released through the Ajna Chakra during meditation, and opening your third eye. So. The connection to the gym's typing is pretty obvious. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, we have now made it to Sotopolis City and have received the city's badge from Wallace. Or Juan, depending on which game you're playing. But in either case, a man so beautiful and fashionable that it'll bring you to tears which means you'll match the badge he gives you. Of course, it's the water type rain badge. It looks like a Triforce made of water droplets, but only the lower left one has any amount of detailing, much like gravity pulling water ever further downwards and to the left. But interestingly, if this were a Triforce, that is the Triforce of Wisdom, imbued with the power of the goddess Nehru, who uses water magic, and she's also the goddess of the sea, so like, if this is a Triforce, that's the one that's water, that's, that's the right one! The Triforce, and perhaps this gym badge too, are based on a 13th century symbol from the Hojo clan in Japan, the Mitsuroko, hope I'm pronouncing that right, which itself was said to be three dragon scales. And remember, Japanese dragons are significantly more associated with the ocean rather than fire. And wouldn't you know it, Juan's ace Pokemon is the water dragon type Kingdra. And Wallace? It, it doesn't fit Wallace as well. Uh, his ace is Milotic, which uh, is kind of dragony, and it, his specifically uses the dragon type move Twister a lot, um, but it's not dragon type. Uh, but actually, let's zoom out a bit and look at the shape of the city. It's also shaped like a big water droplet. Very fitting of the badge. But maybe I'm just thinking too deeply about it and it really is just shaped like the city with the drop there and it's a stylistic choice rather than being a reference to the Triforce or the Hojo clan or... So now, as you've seen, aside from your basic advancing with the technology stuff like color and more pixels, the badges overall have kind of remained the same so far. But Generation 4 would change that. Pokemon Gym badges would never be the same again. Because now, on the touch screen. <laughs> You can clean them. Kind of funny that you can polish the coal badge even, which is the first badge that you can get in Sinnoh, and it's pretty straightforward. Orberg is a mining town, and they have a rock-type gym run by Rourke, and the badge itself looks like a couple of things, like a blocky Pokeball, Rourke's mining hard hat, a minimalist stack of coal in a minecart, or even just a rough piece of coal in an open furnace, which is where you put coal if you want to kill the planet. So that was an easy one. What's next? Ah, we had to turn a city to get the grass-type gym badge from Gardenia. It's the forest badge. I wonder why a forest is grass type. I do like how minimalist it is. It looks like three treetops. Three trees make a forest. And that's no joke, that is actually entirely true. In Japanese, you can write tree like this. Two of these characters squished right next to each other then means woods or grove. And if you draw three of them like this, stacked in the same way as the badge, it means forest. I love that! And they also resemble Gardenia's short green cloak, which is a nice touch. Perhaps the next one will be much more in-depth. So let's move on to... Uh, oh, wait, hang on. Are we playing BDSP or Platinum? Wait, why would anyone play BDSP when Platinum exists? We now move on to Hearth Home City, which is where we'll get the third gym badge in Platinum, but this is actually the fifth badge you get in Diamond and Pearl. In those games, you'd be going to Veilstone instead, which we'll get to. For now, let's face Fantina the ghost type gym leader and get the relic badge. Ooh, yes, some depth. The badge kind of looks like a simplified version of her hair, 
if she had like three blobs instead of four. Uh, but being the ghost badge though, you could see these purple circles as floating spirits around a ghostly aura or around a cursed relic. Hence the badge's name. A relic is an object surviving from a much earlier time, especially one of historical or sentimental value. Oftentimes, they have religious meaning too. For instance, Catholicism has so many ancient relics, typically body parts of old dead saints encased in gold. Buddhism has quite a few relics also, filled with the burned ashes or remains of Buddha. Wait just a moment though, dead body parts? GHOSTS! Yeah, cursed relics are common in media, especially Japanese horror. So the relic badge just sort of resembling three spirits in a circle around a relic of some sort? Sort of in a will-o'-wispy sense? It works. It's perfect. Especially considering Tomoe. This symbol has various uses throughout Japanese history, but the most relevant one for us is its symbolic use at Shinto shrines. In Shintoist thinking, the symbol is connected with the number three, and through this symbol represents all three aspects of the soul. 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 And not, not that soul. The one that is like in people. You know, ghosts and stuff. Ghost type. Okay, now let's go to Veilstone City and get the cobble badge from Maylene. It just looks like a couple blocks of cobblestone. Bricks made from earth that you make nice pathways out of on the ground. So clearly it's the ground type badge because actually it's the fighting type badge really though. Yeah, it's the fighting type gym badge because I'm sure you're aware cobblestone pathways are notorious for just spiking you in the nards. Oh! So what's going on here? Don't tell me it's just because when you're an expert fighter, you never walk, you just kick the ground repeatedly, because that's silly. Wait a sec. Veilstone City's motto or nickname is hewn from stone because like the whole city is carved out of a mountain and the roads are all cobbled together. Is it like how a lot of martial artists will practice their kicks and chops on stone blocks? I mean, what is the city going to do with all those literally chopped by hand blocks other than cobble them together to make their streets, huh? Actually, okay, it, it is pretty clever now that I think about it a little bit. Especially since you could also see the badge as a sort of stylized tatami mat. Traditional Japanese flooring you often see in dojos and such. And in traditional Japanese homes and dojos and such, and even her own gym in the anime, you take your shoes off to not damage the tatami mats. Hence, also the gym leader being foot fetish bait. I mean, she identifies as the barefoot fighting genius. But what makes her bare feet so special? Like all of the martial artists when in these buildings should be barefoot. In fact, almost all of them are. You're just the first one to put so much focus on it because you're also the first lady. Hey, yo, what the? One. It's fitting though. Maylene embodies the ideals of resilience and patience in fitness and combat training by going around everywhere, totally barefoot. I mean, everywhere, even in the snow, which Sinnoh has a lot of because it's so cold. So considering all that, I suppose it's fitting that she loves the ground as a fighter and touching the ground with her own skin, her own incredibly calloused skin. So next we go to Pastoria City to find one of Maylene's friends, Crasher Wake the water-type gym leader who also has a thing for fighting. He is an excitable and fun-loving professional wrestler. It's definitely fun that they made this luchador-like wrestler guy not be the fighting-type gym leader. And actually, small tangent, his propensity for using his gym earnings to help out those less fortunate and pay for the facilities and maintenance of the city and his use of defog to keep the city's weather clear for said less fortunates is a common cliche for luchadors in media. It's a trope that all started from the real-life luchador Frey Tormenta, who was a Mexican priest who started luchadoring to make money to support a local orphanage for more than two decades. Now, remember how the last two fighting type gym leaders had water as their secondary theme and Chuck even gives you the storm badge? Well, Frey Luchador's name translates to Friar Storm and it's definitely a part of what inspired Crasher Wake's name. And like Crasher Wake, he almost always has the mask on when in public, even while doing his priestly duties, which is just amazing. But now, he gives you the Finn badge? What is a fen? That is a simple word with only three letters, and yet I do not know it. But through the power of googling for three seconds, 
I can tell you. A fen is a type of marsh, and Pastoria City is right next to the Great Marsh. But specifically, it's a large tract of land covered in plant life that is frequently, or near always, also flooded. Often, just beneath the surface. Very squelchy when you step on it. Like, it looks like it's just a bunch of grass in a field, but then you step on it and <laughs> your foot sinks in and it's water underneath. Uh, and if you look at the badge, that is one of the things it depicts, actually. You can see these top spikes as blades of grass, but they're not colored green because they don't want to confuse you. It's not the grass badge. Uh, but then this thin line here, that's the soft ground. And then it, just underneath, it's blue because that's all the water underneath. The fen badge, is a fan. Wow. wow! But also, it resembles Crasher Wake's masks. Really cool how all of the badges this gen have resembled the leaders themselves too. At least a bit. You love the floor, shut up. Now we head to Kenalave City to get the mine badge. Wait, didn't we already have a mine-themed gym? Rorks? Yeah. Oh, this gym is run by his dad, Byron. And it's steel type, so it's different. The badge itself looks like three hunks of ore surrounded by three pickaxes, which, uh, he uses a shovel, but same difference. The idea here is that mining tools and equipment are made of metal because they have to be harder and stronger than the stuff they're breaking, otherwise the tools themselves would easily break too, obviously. Zooming out to the city a bit, this is a major port town with big canals, and given the bluish hue of the pickaxes, you could see the middle part as canals going through the city. Or you could even see all of this blue as ocean and the orange bits are the islands, which is how the city is depicted in the anime. Really, for having such a simple design, it's really well thought out. It has a big thought process behind it. Or I'm just really good at BSing. Let's head to Snowpoint City now and see if Candace's icicle badge is at all comparable. The icicles are upside down. It looks more like an iceberg. Interestingly, this is the only badge in this generation that has a different name in Japanese. The Glacier Badge is its original name, and in that context, it does look like a frozen glacier coming down between two carved up mountains. Notably, that's a major part of why Hokkaido, or real world Sinnoh, is so mountainous. Glaciers, several eons ago. But also, for once, this gen, the badge doesn't really resemble the leader, other than just basic type theming and the same kind of colors. I guess you could see this as like a Snover head at an angle? Snover and Obama Snow are her main Pokemon. Best I got is that her main pose. Uh, you could say that it resembles the sweater tied around her waist, the triangular shape in the back, and the twisty arms in front. Eh, that's not super important though. What is important is finishing up our Sinnoh journey because the next stop is our last. It's finally time to head to Sunny Shore City and bring home the bacon. I mean, the beef badge. The beacon badge from Volkner, the electric type gym leader. It looks like Melton because that's entirely a coincidence. Melton didn't exist for like three or four more generations. Really, it primarily resembles the Vista Lighthouse in town, which you have to go to in order to find Volkner before he'll even show up at the gym. But if you wanted to be stretchy about it, the circle is like a head of bright blonde hair and the two spikes resemble his own two large sideburn things. And the bluish hue down there? Yeah, it's like his blue jacket. The blue inside of the head is even representative of his own emotional state because his whole character is just extremely depressed. But I do love the fact that the Electric Gym is the last one before you face off against the Elite Four, because think back to how we started our journey. In Orber, we were rough and tumble youths, full of energy but nowhere near our full potential. Dirty. We reflected upon our past in Eterna City, as coal is ancient underground wood. And we've been chopped and broken up, crushed under the pressure of the ground and water above us, until all that was left was a relic of our old selves, and the spirit to grow more. We were brought up by those who had made the journey before us, and were refined into something greater. To become something much more powerful and beautiful even, as coal turns into diamonds under pressure. And now, we brighten up everyone around us as our true power has awakened and shines on as we face off against our greatest challenges yet and become champion. Long ago, before we had Raging Bolt, before we had Wiglet, before we had Galarian Weezing, yes, even before we had Alolan Exeggutor, Pokemon had the grand idea of take thing and stretch it to make new thing. 
Only back in Gen 5, it wasn't a Pokémon they did this with, it was the Gym Badges. And I guess after 14 years of that, they needed to change them somehow. Pokémon Black and White was a sort of soft reboot for the franchise in many ways, and while not a major part of that, Game Freak decided that changing the overall shape of the Gym Badges was a thing to do. And in this very video your eyes are upon right now, we are going to go over and explain all ten. Yep, ten, because they even elongated the list of badges. Between Black and White and Black 2 and White 2, two gyms stopped and two different gyms started. So, the overall Unova experience gives us ten different badges. And the first is already very unique. It's the Trio Badge, which is given to you by Salon, Chili, or Crab. I just noticed all three of them also pronounce C in their names differently. Isn't English great? Three different gym leaders, but not a triple battle. You only face one of them. Which one? Well, that depends on which one would be super effective on the starter you chose. They are the grass or fire or water type gym leaders. And for example, let's say you chose Oshawott because you're based. Hang on, didn't you pick Snivy? If you chose Oshawott, then you'll face Salon here, whose Pan Sage is super effective against your Oshawott. Repeat for the other wise monkeys for the rest. Honestly, it's a really good first gym because it simply explains type matchups for newcomers, which is Pokémon's main battle mechanic. As for the badge they give you, it's the same regardless of who you battle. It's the Trio Badge, with colors representing the triad of types. On its side, it even resembles a little bow tie, which aptly reflects all three leaders who all have bow ties, as their gym is a butler cafe after all, which is just like a maid cafe, but with twink. It's located in Striaton City. They play on striations, which are lines, stripes, grooves, or what have you, that run parallel to each other, mostly in the context of geology, but also striated clouds exist and are pretty common. And you'll soon see that every single city in Unova is named after cloud things. Striations do fit the badge symbolically too though, because the triangle of starters and the three wise monkeys are all parallel too. All different, yes, but all parallel, equal, the same. Also, Striaton has tri in it, which means three, like the three gym leaders. It, it, it's really a perfect city for these boys. Once you're finished up having a stry a ton of fun beating up one of the ugly monkeys, we move on to Nacreen City, where we face off against Lenora and get the... basic badge. I'm sorry, are you trying to tell me that this lovely lady, who's an archaeologist and the leader of the city's museum, is a basic badge? She is clearly anything but! But I guess the name makes sense though, because the gym is the normal type gym. Normal. Basic. Same diff. And the badge resembles the spine of a hardcover textbook. Book. It's a book. It's a pretty basic looking one too, in fact. The only really interesting feature is that it's a pretty burgundy purple color. The city's name also ties into all of this in a pretty fun way though. Nacreous clouds are polar clouds glowing with iridescent colors, which doesn't necessarily relate to the gym badge or Lenora until you realize that another basis for the city's name is Nacker, or Mother of Pearl, which is the shimmery, iridescent, organic, inorganic composite material that makes up the inside of some mollusks' shells. And also it's what pearls are made of. It's just like a metaphor for normal type Pokemon. Just like most mollusks, normal types appear plain and boring from the outside, but if you look deeper, there's more to them. Inner beauty. Well, except for Ambipom. You go! Also, and this may be a stretch, but if you look closely at the knacker of mollusks, like really, really closely, you can see that its microscopic structure is made up of stacks of platelets of Argonite, and they almost look like the lines on the spines of old-fashioned hardcover books, like the kind of book the badge resembles. Pretty neat, huh? Next up, we go to battle Berg in the Castellia City Gym and receive the Insect Badge. Hmm, I do so wonder what that badge could be. Yeah, the name is a little too on the nose for my taste. I prefer the direct translation of the Japanese Japanese name for the badge, which means Beetle Badge, which is both alliterative and cute. The badge looks like the Elytra of beetles, that is, the hardened forewings of beetles, and this is a bug-type green color as well. It's also pretty fitting for Berg especially, because he's an artist, the tortured genius type, 
and loves nature. And many insects look like works of art themselves, no? And many insects make works of art. And there are a few ways that beetles themselves have been used in art too all throughout history. Just one big relevant example is that the color carmine is traditionally made up using dried, crushed up female cochineal beetles, which aren't actually a beetle, but rather a parasite bug that attaches itself to a prickly pear cacti. And also it takes about 70,000 of these insects to make one pound of cochineal dye. So obviously it was understandably expensive, which is why it was often so prized by European royalty, and at one point was the third most valuable export of the New World after gold and silver. And near perfectly, the red and green of Berg's outfit looks a lot like a cochineal bug attached to a cactus. Coincidence? I think maybe! Oh yeah, also Castellanus clouds are a thing, hence the Castellia city name. It's the big city with the big skyscrapers and Castellanus clouds are the ones that are large vertical columns often adjacent to others, so it really is just perfect. It's a big, major skyscraper -y city. Next up, it's the Bolt Badge, earned by defeating Elisa in Nimbasa City. It's the Electric-type badge, and looks like a lightning bolt, or a crown atop a Pikachu or Emolga tail, which is very fitting since two of Elisa's three Pokémon in this gym are Emolga. The fact that this Electric-type gym is in Nimbasa City is also very fitting, as always, since it's named partially after Cumulo Nimbus Clouds, which are the kinds of clouds that normally accompany thunderstorms. You know, thunder lightning, electricity, and all that jazz. Also, Nimbus in its original Latin means a shining heavenly cloud surrounding a deity. And what is the supermodel Elisa's big puffy jacket illuminated by the hundreds of photographers around her, if not that? For badge number five, we get the Quake Badge, given to us by Clay. And even with no prior knowledge, I think you could guess what type Clay's Quake Badge represents. Yep, steel. I mean ground, the ground type. Uh, but this ground type gym is in Driftvale City, which makes the badge's design fit even better because it looks like a sliver of the ground showing many layers of the earth, otherwise known as strata. And this stratigraphical sliver is being rendered in two as if by something violent, such as an earthquake or tectonic drift. Driftvale City, it's perfect. And yes, it's a cloud pun too, because cloud drift is the term for them moving and a cloud veil is a thing too. It's when there's mist around the middle part of a large cloud, making it look sort of like it's wearing a big hat. Oh my god! The layering of the earth motif continues in Clay's clothes, which are composed of different shades of brown, which matches the shades of brown on the badge pretty well. Also, Clay has this blue-green color accenting his outfit, which is also seen in this blue-green dot on the bottom of the gym's badge. It's turquoise, most likely, a fairly rare mineral. You know, from the ground, and has a lot of spiritual significance to a lot of First Nation tribes, particularly those in the Southwest, but also many Algonquin peoples, those in the area that is today New York, so Unova. It's one of the few things the natives in the area actually mined for, as it's said to protect their carriers in battle, and it was said to have fallen deep into the earth after falling from the clouds. Now we move from Driftvale City to Mistralton City, where after Donkey Konging our way to the High Flying Skyla and defeating her, we are rewarded with the Jet Badge. Which looks a lot like a fancy blue feather with a very simplistic but stylized bird flying downwards underneath it, leaving a streak of misty clouds in its wake. Or being a jet that's leaving... well, you know... Chemtrails? Those things that are as real as birds? If you don't know, you're blessed. But there is a fairly popular conspiracy theory, especially in the US, where airliners and jets are leaving trails of chemicals in the atmosphere to trickle down and control the minds of the masses so that we don't realize the Earth is flat because, you know, the rich and powerful don't breathe the same air we do. In reality, there's complicated science involved, but to dramatically oversimplify it, anything moving as rapidly as a jet engine that high up in the sky in the right temperature and moisture level is going to disturb the air's ambient humidity and create mist in its path. Hence the mist in Mistralton City, which again is the city you get the badge in, and it has a major airport. But the name is even more than that. The Mistral is a regularly occurring strong, cold, northwestern wind in southern France. So maybe that was a hint to Gen 6. But with all these wind and sky things, it's no wonder that it's the flying type gym. Even the leader is named Skyla, and she... <laughs> she certainly has an outfit. She has no wrists, which I guess kind of makes her arms more closely resemble wings. 
and all of those straps and buckles makes her outfit resemble a military fighter jet pilot uniform. But I guess the Halloween sexy time variant. Hmm. Oh good, she's 18, I can say that. They're still kinda sussy, game freak. Well, let's go to Icarus City now and fight Bryson for the Ice-Type Freeze Badge. It looks like a bunch of icicles. Why are the Ice-Type ones always so straightforward? Well, I guess looking at Bryson's ace Pokémon, Beartick, it also resembles the three icicles on Beartick's face. Wow, and being that it's Icarus City, it's highly elevated and right next to Twist Mountain, so maybe you could also see it as like the top part of the badge is representing like the, the city or the mountain. Yeah. But isn't the city name fun? Yeah? Icarus or Isiris? Oh, is it actually pronounced Isiris? Because cirrus clouds are a thing. They're those really, really clouds that... They're those clouds that are like really, really high up there in the atmosphere. And rather than being made of water particles, they are made of tiny ice crystals. So it's just perfect. And now the final gym badge you get in black and white is the legend badge in Opelucid City, which you get from either Drayden in black or Iris in white, but dragon type either way. This badge resembles a spiky uh, thing. I can see a couple of things here. Like maybe a dragon sorcerer's spiky magic staff with a magic orb in it. Or maybe a broken medieval morning star? It is kind of dragony itself, maybe? Like like if the orb was the eye, and then this it's a spiky dragon head, or a spiky dragon wing. Who's their ace Pokemon? They both use Haxorus as their ace. Okay, so perhaps it's a very stylized Haxorus blade. The orb is the eye and the long part is the part of the blade that goes up. They just made it really, really spiky too. Maybe because they also both use Dredagon as their second most powerful Pokemon? Either way, being the legend badge is fitting. You're a legend for getting it. I mean, it's the last badge you need in black and white. But also, dragons themselves are all about myths and legends, because they aren't real, like chemtrails. But there's also many stories or legends about them to begin with, because that's where they came from. Such as the legend of the dragon slaying Saint George, who Drayden and Iris fit into pretty well. We did a whole video about that up here, if I can find I do not remember which video it was in. It'll be linked there, and at the end. But as for how the city name ties in, Apolucid could combine Opacious and Translucidus clouds, which are similar, but opposites in one regard. These are the overcast clouds that pretty much go on for as far as you can see, just a blanket of cloud covering the entire sky. The difference is that Translucidus clouds are semi-transparent, so the light coming from the sun or the moon can shine through them enough that you can pinpoint the location of them, whereas opacious clouds are opaque, so you can't really tell where the sun or the moon is through them. Both cover everything, like dragons' many resistances to the main four elemental types. But the difference here is how bright or dark it is, how black and white it is, or maybe even how thick and experienced. Drayden is a lot more of both of those compared to Iris. But also, also, this entire city is the same but different depending on which version of the games you're playing. In Black and Black 2, it's a city of the future, shining lights and glass-covered buildings. Whereas in White and White 2, it's a city of the past, more trees, which is nice, but the buildings and roads are more cobblestone and concrete, much more opaque, much less shiny and transparent. So here, the city name covers both versions of it. Very clever, Game Freak. Love that for you. And now we advance time by a few years because it's Black 2 and White 2 time. There's two minor differences and two major differences here. The minor differences are simple. Iris is no longer a gym leader, so now Drayden is by himself. And Lenora now only runs the museum and left the gym leadering to Sharon, your rival from the first game. But he still just gives you the basic badge because he is just a basic ba <laughs> The two major differences now though, there's no more Freeze Badge, and no more Trio Badge, or Gyms even. You go to completely different areas and face different leaders altogether now. And the first we face after defeating Sharon for the Basic Badge is Roxy and the Toxic Badge. Poison type, obviously. <laughs> it resembles a bunch of poisonous bubbles, a common way to depict a poison status effect or surface. 
the top bubble even has little crossbones behind it, a common way to mark something as deadly or toxic. Plus, it fits her name, the X in Roxy, the X in Toxic, and it fits the first Pokemon she throws out too, Coughing, who has a skull and crossbones on its body. Actually, come to think of it, her ace Pokemon is Whirlipede and later Scolipede, who have these purple or red circles on them. So perhaps when curled up and spinning rapidly, yeah, they could resemble her badge. But as for the gym's location, Verbank City also has the Verbank Complex, an industrial complex that shoots out tons of pollution through its smokestacks, which is also very sitting of the city where the Poison-type gym is. And in that context, you could also see the badge as a stylized plume of toxic gas rising up out of the smokestack. Cool. As in not cool. But cool. Where's my cloud pun? It's here. A Virga is a part of a cloud. Specifically, it's a streak or shaft of precipitation you can see in the distance. So like, it's distant rain. But specifically, due to other weather conditions, that rainwater re-evaporates before it hits the ground, giving the clouds this peculiar shape. It's a punk of a cloud. It's like, ooh, I'm gonna give you rain. Huh. Take it back. And the bank part of the city's name is just because it's next to a river bank. Now, we fast forward all the way through five of the same gyms, get the legend badge as the seventh, and now we head to Humilau City for the eighth gym badge, the wave badge. This is just kind of beta Elola. New York doesn't really have anything like this. A gentrified, tourist-happy, Polynesian-inspired city. But maybe the other new city, Verbank, is possibly inspired by Burbank in California, which also happens to be right next to Hollywood, famous for being the blockbuster movie-making city. Just like how Pokestar Studios, the Pokemon movie-making area, is right next to Verbank. Okay, so maybe they're adding new cities based on other major cities in America. It's possible. I guess it's not too out of place. Place. Either way though, this city's name comes from two root words. The first is a cloud. Go figure. The cumulus humulus. Very common summertime clouds that are often referred to as fair weather clouds. Like if it's a beautiful, gorgeous day, the temperature is just right, the moisture is just right, the sun is shining, and there's just a couple clouds in the sky. Those are cumulus humulus clouds. Most likely. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's how I really like pronouncing it. It's a cumulus humulus. Humalau City also pulls from Hukilau. Hukilau? Humalau City also pulls from Hukilau, though, which is the traditional fishing method used by ancient Hawaiians involving a large net. Hence Marlon and his large diving getup with large net. As for the badge design, it's pretty straightforward. First of all, it's a water droplet, but then, given the lines inside of it, maybe it also resembles many layers of ocean waves on top of each other as they hit the beach. Fun. It is definitely a pretty badge. And while this time around it seems like the names of the badges are much more straightforward, there still was quite a bit of thought put into their actual design and tying them into the gym leaders and or the cities of the gyms themselves, which is really, really cool. It's a shame that they only did this for, what, one more generation, and even then, barely? Let's just say that people always tell me that the Pokémon games have lost their soul. 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 They say Pokémon has run out of ideas because they are basing new Pokémon on jobs and inanimate objects as if they hadn't always. They always did that, did that. Old thing good, new thing bad. They say Pokemon is now just shoveling out games before doing any amount of QA testing just to get products on shelves. And I say, absolutely that part is true. 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 But there's always been a part of me that thinks, no, no, it's not that the games have lost their soul. It's just that you've grown up. Now you see the repeating patterns that were always there. You see the tried ideas that they and others have done already. You compare them to more past experiences you've had. You understand the deeper game mechanics, so the games and such seem easier and less thought out, when really, it's you who's changed. 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 And yet, Every now and again, I'm brought back into this melancholic existence we call reality, and my eyes are forced open. 
and looking deeply into the designs and origins around the Pokemon Gym badges has been one of these moments. Let's review. While there always were the simple, thoughtless badges like the Boulder Badge, there's also always been badges with deeper designs and thoughts put into their names. Like the Soul, Marsh, Thunder, and Earth Badges, all from Gen 1, are incredibly deep and thought out for being in a Game Boy game. The Plane Badge is like a quadruple pun. The Zephyr Badge? Like what is a Zephyr? And the Steel-type Mineral Badge in Olivine City? Olivine being the mineral we mostly use to make molds for pouring liquid metal into? There's so much depth! And then we lose some. The Heat Badge, Knuckle Badge, Feather, Rain, meh. There's some thought when it comes to the cities they're in and what their leaders look and be like, but... Hmm. We do see some death return in Gen 4. Now more than ever, certain parts of the badges directly resemble some part of the gym leader's design and the location of their city. Very cool. They just look kinda lame. And then Gen 5, we really start to lose it again. The cities and leaders surrounding the badges are still exemplary but the badges themselves are, well, the basic badge. Insect, Bolt, Quake, Freeze, Toxic. You might as well just start naming all of the badges directly after the type and call it a day. This is foreshadowing. Because while yes, the first badge you get in Gen 6 is the bug type bug badge, the rest of the badges here are nice and interesting. But after this generation, all is lost. Gen 7 removed gyms and badges altogether, which was a very welcome change at the time. Anything for a single seed of spice of something different in my Pokémon is welcome, but looking back now, we realize it's probably because they had given up on the badge names and designs entirely. Because when we look ahead to Gen 8, what do we get? The Grass Badge, the Water Badge, Fire Badge, Fighting Badge, the Ghost Badge, Fairy Badge, Rock Badge, the Ice Badge, Dark Badge, and the Dragon Badge. Oh, and me now. It's just, uh, it's just the name of the type with the type symbol on it. Like at least they had different gym leaders with different types for different versions of the game. And at least all the badges had these shapes that can then all be put together to make one ultimate disc of badge. Like that's cool. It's the same way that British coins come together to make the coat of arms. Perfectly fitting of Galar. But then they truly just gave up on Paldea. The badges are now truly in arguably 100% devoid of our precious soul. <laughs> Every badge looks exactly the same, but with its corresponding type symbol on it. That's it. And they are all just named after the type they are too. Zero uniqueness, zero personality, zero soul. 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 Oh, let's, let's move back to where we really are in this badge series. We're in Kalos, Gen 6. The last Pokemon badges to have any soul. Soul, soul, soul. Okay, that's enough with the echo effect, please. Oh, besides the first badge, the first one does not have any. The first badge in the Kalos League is given to you in the flowery Santa Luna City by Viola, and it looks like this. The Bug Badge. Name aside, it's a pretty cute badge, and I love that the spots on the wings are this shade of green. It's the shade that the bug type typically is. Also, the way the antenna go outwards and then join together looks a lot like Viola's hair, but like upside down. Especially when you look at the swooping insect antenna-like shape of the two side strands. And there's a kind of beetle we should mention, the Mormolycephilides nuts. Minus the nuts. Um, that is also known as the Violin Beetle because it looks like a violin, and a violin is a slightly bigger version of the viola. And the badge is clearly inspired by beetles specifically, and violas are also flowers. Flowers that are notoriously loved by aphids. And what famously eats aphids? 
beetles, especially ladybugs, which the badge is the spitting image of. It really all comes together with just a terrible, terrible name that's terrible. But also given that her ace Pokemon is Vavillion, you could also see it as a stylized Vavillion head too, or an ant head. So it's kind of perfectly generic bug then, right? Fitting then that the gym is in Santa Lune City, which comes from the French word for sandalwood, a fragrant wood that specifically moths and butterflies absolutely adore. Now then, we make our way to the cliffside silage city, and after we beat Grant, we are rewarded with the cliff badge, which is obviously the rock type badge. It's pretty neat though when you think about it for at least a second. The arrangement of these three rectangles are like three tiers, like they are raising you upwards towards the top of a rocky mountain. They also kind of look like the hand and footholds on rock climbing walls, which is what Grant's gym looks like. But they also look like the different layers of the Earth's strata, aka the layers of Earth you always see in like Earth crust diagrams. And the colors of the badge combined with the tiered look of it is very reminiscent of Grant's own hair. It's very sporty, like the city it's in. On top of rock climbing, this city's got beach trails and mountain bike courses. I mean, with a name like Silage, a cycling village on a ledge, that makes sense. Or rather, sense. Because, oh good, just like how Unovan cities were all cloud puns, Kalos towns are all aromatics. Silage is a French word for a scented trail, like from a wake. So if you were burning incense or sage and walking along a trail, you that would be silage. So it's a good physical activity themed way of keeping with the smell theme. Now get ready to rumble badge, because we're going to show our city to get the rumble badge, which you receive after defeating Corina and her Lucari dose. Her, her two Lucarios. It's pretty clearly just two gloved hands meeting in the middle, which is why it's no surprise that it's the fighting type badge. Looks good, I guess, but it's pretty boring. Inspirationally, it's just like fighting type orange. Like they could have tweaked the colors to make it match Karina's outfit or something. But anyway, it's also like the two fists together pose that some fighters do while meditating as a part of training. Like under a waterfall, you know, that whole trope. And that's kind of Lucario's whole deal. Fighting, meditation, and sensing aura. Which brings us to the city name. It references the Chalor Bay in France, yes. But also, with its spelling specifically, it references the Shala tree, whose resonant incense are sacred to practitioners of Buddhism and Hinduism. Specifically, for meditation. Now to Coal Marine City. Oh boy, is it marine. It's by a bay, so water type surely. Nope, it's grass, that's even cooler. The badge itself is a big leaf with a bluish hue to it, almost aquamarine green in color. And I like how the fenestrations in the leaf are shaped almost like a small sprouting plant itself. Fenestrations are the holes and slits naturally found in some leaves. In this case, it's most likely the famous Monstera Deliciosa. They are incredibly popular plants for gardeners and house plant hobbyists and enthusiasts alike due to their unique looks and relative ease of care. This is ours, if you couldn't tell by me batting it a bunch. Look at this leaf. It's so pretty. Look, this is double fenestrated, if you can tell. I like this plant. The gym leader here is Ramos, an old man who loves gardening, a common hobby for retired seniors. His beard is weird, but maybe it's to look like the bottom part of the badge? Hmm. Well, he chose a good town to live in. Comarine's mild yet sunny climate is perfect for Monsteras. And again, the city name works great. It's marine, yes, but it's also Kumaru, the French word for tonka beans, which grow natively in and around French Guiana. And of course, they are extremely fragrant and are as commonly used in cooking as they are in perfume making in France. Now we head to the middle of it all, the very luminous Illumino City, where we battle and defeat Clement the Inventor and get the Voltage Badge. While it's clearly the electric type badge, it is kind of weird for an electric badge. Like, it's got the cliche lightning bolts, kinda, and it's yellow, but also, like, what's with its weird shield-y shape? Like, it doesn't super seem to fit. Like, is this supposed to be a part of Clement's solar charger, which absorbs sunlight to charge and later acts as a flashlight? Like, weird to make it shaped like just one of the flaps, but that would explain these weird lightning bars coming out from the middle like that. It's less lightning and more bright lens flare, stylized pointing of light directly at the camera kind of thing. Did that make sense? Um, is it a shield because it's like a coat of arms? I mean, Lumino City is based on Paris. 
THE French city. But the Paris coat of arms doesn't really fit. Uh, perhaps the diplomatic emblem of France? Yeah, if you replace the leaves with bolts or light lines, I guess maybe. What an ugly badge. For shame, Clement. Shame. What you have in brains, you lack in an artist's touch and common sense. The city itself is pretty thematically fitting, though. Paris' own nickname is the City of Light, or in French, La Ville et Lumière, hence Luminos. Is it mixing bros in there? Luminose? Roses are very aromatic and are one of the most common scents in, like, perfumes and stuff. Well, in the game's original Japanese, the city is named Mier City, which also comes from La Ville Lumière, while also referring to Mier Incense. So yes, smells are still absolutely at play. <laughs> now let's head into the magical fairy tale forest and find the magical La Vare City with its 13-hour clock that we explained in great detail in this video. Check it out if you like fairies, it's cool. This is where we will fight Valerie for the aptly named Fairy Badge. Now normally, I'd say this is dumb, stupid, lame even, to have a badge named just after its type. But Fairy was brand new at the time. This game invented it, and it was a big main marketing thing, so, you know, Fairy was a big deal, so, Fine. It's acceptable. Not good, but acceptable. I do like the design though. It's like fancy stained glass and resembles fairy wings, perhaps even Valerie's own arms when put together. Now, there's quite a bit of lore around her that we won't get into here because I don't like the way she's looking at me. Uh, but as far as the badge goes, the stained glass look is perfect. While stained glass was first made by either the Egyptians or Romans, depending on who you ask, it got huge in Europe in the Middle Ages, especially France. And out of all of the European countries, France was the one who kept up with the art form through the ages. Elsewhere in Europe and abroad, the use of stained glass came and went in and out of style and in and out of fashion, but France always had the greater continuity of stained glass production. And it just looks so whimsical and magical too, especially for the time, so it being used in the fairy type badge is just too perfect. But does the city fit? You betcha. La Vare City comes from Lavender, another very fragrant plant used in soaps and perfumes, but also it could pull from River or Rivre. It's French for dreaming. As in, in game, La Vare City is referred to as the city of otherworldly dreams. Almost like this is in a fairy realm during a witching hour with that 13 hour clock. And now to the penultimate gym in Anastar City. Upon victory against Olympia, we obtain the Psychic Badge. <sighs> okay, I take back what I said about the Fairy Badge being acceptable. We now have three badges in this generation, just named after their type. Clearly, we were already on the path towards every badge just being named after the type like we got in Gen 8 and 9. But it just hurts so much more, because not all of them are that in this gen. It's just... you can see it. Looking back in hindsight, you can see their lost inspiration. Oof. But hey, it still looks cool. So there's that. Not only does it look like a future-seeing crystal ball with smoky, dreamlike smoke coming from it, but it also kind of resembles Olympia's own hair and outfit. Or kind of like a Jin or genies materializing out of the purple ball on the bottom. Both are also very nebula-esque and spacey, which makes it being located in Anis Star City so fitting. It is named after Star Anis, or Anis. Anis? Anus? It's a plant with a star-shaped fruit pod, and they're common in spices the world over, most notably in things like masala chai, Vietnamese pho, and one of the ingredients in traditional Chinese five spice, because it's just very aromatic, and it's often also burnt as incense, and that's already all extremely fitting. But also consider this. Olympia is Greek, possibly. There's no, like, Greeks in... Pokemon world, but, you know, she's Greek. I mean, she's in France, which is very close by, but then she's also got the tanned skin, and her name is Olympia, and that makes sense because, like, Mount Olympus, the Celestial Olympians, the Olympics, one of the starters of this generation, Fennekin, eventually becomes the psychic fire-type Del Fox, who's named after both foxes and Delphic oracles, ancient Greek future-seeing psychics who burned a lot of incense and herbs to receive their visions from the gods. Wow. 
they were extremely high. But the way you see incense smoke just woo 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 wooing up is just like the smoke coming off of the crystal ball in the badge. So, there you go. And now we finally go to Snowbell City for the final badge in Kelos. And before I even explain the gym or the badge, yes, it's Snowbell. It's ice type. And yes, even a snowbell is literally a thing. It's the common name for the Styrax genus of plants, which, yes, since the times of the ancient Greeks were used heavily for their strong smells to make incense and perfumes. But yes, here's Wolfric. He gives you the iceberg badge. It looks like an iceberg floating on water within a hexagon with water droplets at each point, which makes the hexagon look kind of like a snowflake. This badge's whole design just screams ice type so loudly that it could cause an avalanche in this city of ever lasting winter. Ah! It also kind of looks like Wolfric, maybe, I guess, possibly. Not just because of his blue coat that he, of course, only wears on his shoulders like the cool guy he is, but also because of his spiky collar and his overall hexagonal head shape. And it's also kind of like the necklace he always wears, which is a locket that is an elongated hexagon. Fun fact, the locket is said to have his dearest Pokemon photo in it, though the only time we really get a clear look at what's inside of his locket is in the concept art of him where you can see it's a picture of his wife and two children along with a very tippy top of a little Pokemon head which is very clearly a Bergmite, which is assumedly his ace Pokemon Avalug when it was little. Cute little detail. But speaking of Avalug, the colors and shape of the iceberg in the center of the badge are very reminiscent of Avalug. And the fact that it's a hexagonal snowflake is like his second strongest Pokemon, Cryogonal. So it turns out, like an iceberg, there's a lot more hidden under the surface of this man. Like, did you know that he's named after the Wolfiana Carthanaka, which are varying shades of blue and blue purple, and the flowers are tubular and have about six points, like the badge, and are teardrop shaped in profile, like the water droplets at the end of the snowflake tips? They originated in the Alps, which do go into France, and are very cold and snowy. And these flowers often do droop down, like Wolfric's mutton chop ends. It's pretty cool, right? Like, I see what they did there, but now I'm not gonna snowflake on you and end the video here because Lord knows I'm not going to explain the Alola Islands challenge stamps in their own video. So let's just see how far Pokemon fell after this. Alola doesn't do the whole gym thing. They're too chillaxed or something. Well, until Kakui decides to start the gym league in the region, but that won't be relevant till towards the end of the game. Instead of a Pokemon league, you advance through the game by competing in the island challenge, which involves doing various challenges on each island, which will then let you challenge the island's kahuna. And there are no badges for completing each trial. There's only stamps, and the stamps, while pretty, aren't all that complicated complicated to explain. They're just like a stamp of the island's guardian Tapu's face from the front, and then you get another stamp for defeating the region's Elite Four and Professor Kakui and thus becoming Alola's first champion. But the stamp is just a stylized rendering of the island's challenge's amulet you receive from before the challenge even starts, which is a cute design that incorporates elements from all four Tapu's designs, but like, it's still pretty simple. With sword and shield, we at least have actual gyms again, and thus have badges, though it's definitely a cop-out because each badge is just a simple icon of that gym type with any sliver of a broken coin. And when all of them are put together, it forms an entire coin. A cool idea, but it makes an otherwise interesting bit of lore and character, the badges themselves individually, kind of meaningless. And then we get to Paldea, where the Pokemon company has clearly just given up all attempts at putting forth, like, any effort towards the gym badges themselves, because each badge is finally just the type symbol in the same circular border with the same metallic silver background. Though it is pretty interesting to note that with the introduction of the two main non-league storylines, it's the first region to have non-league badges. The Starfall Street badges all have the Team Star logo in negative, but as that base of color. But it still has the same background and border as the Gym's badges. It's almost like they themselves spray painted their logo onto the badge, which is kind of fun and fitting of the fact that Team Star is just a school gang composed of weirdly cool dorks. Another cool thing to note is that when you include the Starfall Street badges and the Path of Legends badges, there's a badge of sorts for all 18 Pokemon types, which I do think is pretty neat, but I don't think that really excuses the total lack of Sol in the actual gym badges themselves. But admittedly, I do love the fact that with the earning of each badge, you also take a selfie with all of the leaders, or on the Path of Legends, uh, 
you take five different selfies with Arvin. Arvin is definitely one of the most fleshed out Poke Girls the series has had yet, so I'll let that one slide once. And that's that then. We've now explained every gym badge. If you missed one of the previous videos, they are all linked somewhere, I'm sure. What's your favorite badge? And do you have any means of defending Game Freak for this travesty? If so, let me know down below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, never stop using your noggin like Game Freak did when it came to designing the badges in Gen 9.